Well, I guess you guys like the tutorial videos. A lot of people tell me that they have reached a point where they have mastered the basics of the game but can't advance past their current level. An easy way to increase your success in the game greatly is by starting each battle correctly, primarily by reading the team list. Reading the team list is an incredibly important skill to master as it exponentially increases both the survivability of your vehicle and the ability of you to position the vehicle in the most impactful locations possible. This does, however, require you to have a basic understanding of each vehicle and its roles in the battle. If you think you are able to meet that requirement, congratulations! You have my permission to keep watching this video. If not, get out. Here's how this works. In the beginning of each battle, as long as your computer is not a potato, you are given 30 seconds where you have the time to survey the map, the teams, and plan out your approach. Many only do this in clan games and tournaments, but formulating a plan is just as important in a random battle. In order to keep this organized for an easy understanding, I'm going to be going over a step-by-step -step thought process to use to correctly survey the team list. While this will take some practice to get down, it becomes eventually easier to consider all of these variables within the 30 seconds you are given. Towards the end of the video, I will show a couple of examples using these steps. Alright, here goes. Step 1. Check your vehicle. This one's pretty simple. If you are playing a particular tank, chances are you know what kind of tank it is. You know what the tank is good at, and you know what you like doing with the tank. Combine the tank's strengths and your strengths. If you have a tank that is an all-rounder, but you like aggressive play, go ahead and look for opportunities to play aggressively. Equipment affects this as well. If you are set up as a passive scout, you are going to be more limited to different positions than if you are set up as an active scout. Keep in mind that the more people you are playing with, the more complex this step becomes. If you are in a platoon, keep in mind what your platoon mates are using as well. Look for opportunities to work together alongside your toon mates. If you are in a clan event, particularly as a caller for the group, you'll have to keep in mind every single vehicle you are using simultaneously. This overwhelming amount of information is often why callers, including myself, tend to lean towards more pre-formulated plans rather than improv calls each battle. It's also why we're not going to be going over clan strategy this video, but I'll probably be making another video on that in the future. Step 2. Check the tier. This is self-explanatory. Are you top tier? Great! Are you bottom tier? Oh well, more XP and credits for you to get. All the same tier? That means we have an equal fight. Are you in a KV2? Everyone else is screwed anyway. This step is just important to keep in mind as you go through the next steps. If you are a top tier, you'll probably be the one making decisions, as you will have the greatest impact on the game. Where you go, the main strength of your team goes. If you are bottom tier, however, you have to remember to plan around the bigger tanks. Play off of your team's strengths. I'll talk more about what that means later. Step 3. Check the map. This is another step to just keep in mind. When you see a particular map, you should instantly be able to think to yourself, Oh, on this map, I like this spot and this spot in my tank. It's likely you'll be using these spots when you load in anyway, so it's good to keep this in mind. It's also important to consider which tanks have the greatest advantage on this map. If it's an open map, then you have to be even more scared about artillery. If it's a lot of bushes, you have to be worried about light tanks and tank destroyers. If you're on a map that has a lot of hills, try to keep in mind that the turreted tanks are going to be at a greater advantage than tanks without gun depression. A way to make this step easier and faster is by going into your general settings, finding the tips on the loading battle screen drop down, and changing it to display minimap. This will allow you to view the map and your spawn while you are loading into the game, so even if you have a potato computer, you still have some extra time to plan out your movements. Step 4. Check for platoons. Platoons are super dangerous. Chances are good players with similar tanks to one another in a platoon will be functioning together. This makes them a threat on whatever flank they go to. Top tier platoons are particularly dangerous. If a platoon of good players is running the top of the list, you should always formulate your plan entirely around them. If you can counter them, great. Dedicate your plan to counter them. If not, do your absolute best to avoid them, especially if you're in a bottom tier tank. If platoons are not in similar tanks, however, and are in tanks with drastically different playstyles, they're slightly less important to worry about. However, it is important to keep in mind who is platooned with who. If you encounter someone later in the game that is platooned with someone else, expect them to help one another and work as a team much more efficiently than a random group. If you're cornering a certain player that is in a platoon with, say, a tank destroyer, chances are that tank destroyer is going to be in a position to support that player. Step 5. Check the enemy team for threats. Particular tanks are bigger threats than others. Obviously, tier is a big factor, but try to compare enemy threats directly to your tank. If you're in a slow heavy tank, check if the enemy team has high penetration TDs. Try to avoid where they may go. If you are in a medium tank, you can really go wherever you want. Just be certain to avoid particularly unwinnable fights. For already, you should be locking onto the biggest threat in order to target them throughout the game. In tank destroyers, keep an eye out for a large amount of light tanks. In lights, keep an eye out for enemy light tanks who are better at spotting certain roles. 
For example, EBRs are a pain for other tanks if you are set up to active spot, because EBRs are pretty much superior to all other light tanks in an active spotting position. If there is an enemy EBR, usually best to play passive until they are dead. The most important thing, though, is to check how many artillery there are. Artillery are always a concern. Always. Step 6. Check the friendly team. Same thing. Check what your team has. Check what tanks are the most powerful on your team. Top tier, extremely strong heavies, strong friendly platoons, a large amount of a certain class of tank. If, you're seeing, if you see your team has a large amount of mediums, for example, make certain to take advantage of all those mediums. Follow the group of them and form a wolf pack. Take advantage of a team with a lot of strong D TDs by spotting for them. That kind of thing. Step 7. Compare the weaknesses between the friendly team and the enemy team. Compare both teams. Which team is set up best for a particular side? If you're on a city map you have an, and you have an IS-7 platoon against a team of AMX 50Bs, you have the armor and frontal assault advantage. Take advantage of the power you have while avoiding or countering the power that the enemy team has. Step 8. Formulate a plan. This is the part where everything comes together. It's all also the most difficult to explain because there are so many different variables that can contribute to it. Take all of the things you looked over in the previous steps and decide the best place to go. It's best to think about it in order of importance. What tank are you in? Where would you prefer going if nothing else was stopping you? Is there something stopping you? Are there particular vehicles you definitely need to worry about? Is there a portion of the map you have the definite advantage on? Is it best for you to push that advantage or are you strong enough to cover the team's weak side with a holding vehicle? For example, if you're in a T110E3, you're obviously not going to be able to take advantage of the wolf pack, but you can try to counter what they are strong with. This is where the trick requires a decent amount of game knowledge and experience. Only you can decide all of this, and there is no amount of detailing or examples I can give to cover all of the possibilities, especially because I probably have a different playstyle than you do. If you prefer a more passive playstyle than I do, or if you prefer playing tank destroyers while I prefer playing medium tanks, then obviously you're going to be better experienced and looking for those tank destroyer positions that you want to take advantage of in every single game. Step 9. Formulate a backup plan. Almost done, I promise. This is the same as the last step. Once the game starts, something may change your mind. The wolf pack opportunity you were hoping to take advantage of may never begin. The team may completely abandon one flank for some reason, because random battles. If this is the case, and you aren't practiced enough in the art of making shit up, also known as improvising, then you should have a secondary plan set up during the countdown, just in case everything goes wrong. Step 10. Adjust as needed. Just because the countdown ends and the battle begins, you are not done reading the team list. The game changes all the time. A fight you expected to win might not go your way. Tanks may deploy differently than expected. Keep in mind which tanks you still have alive on your team and adjust your play accordingly. If the big threats on the enemy team are taken out early, maybe it's time to start playing more aggressively in order to keep contributing to the game and reaping the rewards. If the opposite occurs and you're the one on the defensive, maybe it's time to run for your life. If artillery drowns itself, maybe it's time to report them. You know, the usual stuff. Now obviously this process seems simple enough on paper, but it is a lot more difficult to apply to each individual game. And the only way you're going to get experience with this is by practicing. The more of these games and scenarios that you run through, the easier it will become. I'm going to run through a couple of examples just to really show the thought process I go through for each battle. I'm going to be doing it with a paused screen because otherwise it's a lot more difficult to communicate effectively within 30 seconds. You should be able to think a bit faster than I'm able to talk and explain things. I'm talking too much. Let's just get into it. So for these first two examples, I'm going to walk through step by step so that it's easier to follow. But for the other ones, I'm probably going to be going through exactly what my thought process is so you can see how fast you should be pr trying to do this. So step one, check your vehicle. In this battle, I'm in the AE phase one. Uh, what I know about this tank, it's got good turret armor except for that little cupola there. It's a good frontal fighter. The side is very weak, so it's very weak to getting flanked. Its lower plate armor is very weak as well, so I'm going to be wanting to fight hull down, and because my gun depression is so good, I have the opportunity to do that. I have a very punchy gun that will be able to penetrate almost anything of my tier and a bit higher. And yeah, it's a very good all-rounded tank, I just have to be very careful not to get outflanked. So I don't want to be going to anywhere open, and I also don't want to be focused down by artillery if possible. So step two, check the tier. Well, it's a tier 10 game, there are no tier 8s, but there are quite a few tier 9s, so I'm pretty fine with that check the map we are on tundra tundra has a very interesting hill over here i like this spot here tundra also has this location over here that's a good heavy spot this spot here i could use if i wanted to just hold but i'm not sure that that would be too useful 
check for platoons. Well, I'm in a platoon with two other players, one of which is my artillery friend, and the other uh, one is my Emil 2 friend. So I have the opportunity to work with the Emil 2 and the artillery if need be, and I can trust that my artillery platoon weight will be giving me support fire. And so this would be a good time to check where my artillery friend is going. Uh, check the enemy team for threats. Well, they have a platoon 1, which is a 7-1, and a tortoise together. That's not too big of a risk. They might push down the 1 line together, but I don't see a tortoise going down the 0 line with the 7-1. Uh, they have an RU-251 and a GW Tiger, so I know that wherever that RU is going to be, the GW is going to be giving him support fire. So I'm going to have to worry about that. As far as the actual tanks go, they have two artillery. They only have one light tank, which isn't too big of a deal. Those two 430s are pretty dangerous, but I know that on places that require gun depression, they're not going to be too much of a risk. That 7-1 will be a bit more of a risk, but I can now trade him. They have an AE Phase 1. That's not too bad. The Maotian's a pretty easy penetration if I uh, load heat. So if I go this way and I meet the Maotian, because he's probably going to be going that way, then that would be a fairly easy kill for me. But I do have to worry about those artillery. And if they're sitting here, then they're going to have constant fire into this. They also have a 4005. And the 4005 tends to like to sit here and counter anything that tries to go hold down here. So I'm going to have to be careful about that. They also have two other very dangerous tank destroyers as well here. These guys might be sitting back here and providing support fire for this, but I am more afraid of this because this allows me to stay hold down, whereas this side I might just get focused by HE nonstop. Plus, if we manage to take hill, the hill is a very advantageous spot on this map, so I'm leaning a bit more towards this spot. Check friendly team for weaknesses. What do we have? We have a faster heavy tank than their fa than their top heavy tank. We have a leopard versus their SD2. That SD2 is going to be a bit of a threat because he can just win over this side pretty easily. We have two medium tanks, so we, again, have advantage over here. We have a Gorilla 15, a Stratzwagen, and an E4, so the Gorilla is probably going to be able to sit back here. Maybe one of them will counter this side. We don't know. Uh, T10. T10 is a fast heavy tank, so we're this side's looking really bad right now because that's where the heavy heavies want to go. We have an E50. That's not too bad. We have a 430, a Waffentrager, Panzer IV, and a T49. So we have pretty much the same thing they do for the lower half of the team. So now it's just a kind of decision making where do i want to go so i'm leaning towards this side because that's good if i was in a hole if i was in a holding heavy if i was top tier maybe i would go this way and i'd take my emil 2 with me and then we would be able to hold this side out with artillery support unfortunately we don't have the opportunity to do that because they have much heavier heavies than we do so instead i'm going to be focusing on this side and i'm going to be pushing up this side if this fails i might be able to drop back to here if absolutely necessary, but usually going this spot means you're fully committed here. But I don't see that being too much of an issue. We should be able to win this side pretty easily. Uh, and my Emil 2 friend says he wants to hold this side, so we're not going to be working together. He's going to be using this, and he's going to be holding this location here if they bum rush that side. So yeah, that'll be the plan. All right, let's show a mid-tier one. Say you're in a poodle, you're on Prokhorovka. Prokhorovka is a pretty rough map because the poodle is pretty slow. It's a big target, so what are you going to do? Check your vehicle. What's the Poodle good at? Well, I just said, the Poodle is slow. It's a pretty big target, so you're going to have to hide it somewhere. Uh, you don't really have much camo to work with. You can't really work with your alpha damage. You don't have enough gun depression, so you're pretty limited. Right away, I can tell that I'm probably going to want to either sit in the very back corner of the 1-2 line, or I'm going to want to sit somewhere in this area. I can't go here because I don't have the gun depression. If I go here, then you'll just die. And then check the tier. It's an all-tier 6 game, so... That makes it pretty easy. Uh, check the map, Prokhorovka. Obviously, I'm combining uh, steps one through three a little bit here. Uh, check platoons. What platoons have they got? They've got one KV-2 and one Jagdpanzer IV platoon. That's not really too much of a threat. If I was if I was to see the KV-2 over here, th then that would be a bit of a problem because I'd know the Jagdpanzer IV is here. If I was to see the KV-2 here, then the Jagdpanzer IV might be here. So I could keep that in mind. Uh, check the enemy team for threats. Obviously, they have a KV-2, but on this map, that's not too big of a deal. Um, what else have they got? They've got a lot of medium tanks, so there's probably going to be a pretty large fight that's going to be happening over on this side, because that's where medium tanks like to go. At the same point, they could be trying to push up the 1-2 line. I'm going to have to be careful of that, but the main threats are these artillery. The artillery are a huge threat on this map, along with the light tanks. So they got three light tanks, one of which is an AMD, so he's going to be running around the midline, probably with one of the other light tanks. One of the light tanks will probably be going the 1-2 line to this little bush spot here. So I'm going to want to be careful of the light tanks and be aware that I'm going to be constantly spotted. So if I go here, I'm going to be constantly spotted. But if I go back here, then there's the same risk that the light tanks are probably going to be able to spot me from here. So I have two options. I can either go to here or I can go to here. 
Uh, personally, in this situation, I would go here because you are able to pull out of here if absolutely need be, whereas on the 1-2 line, you're going to have to go a very long distance to pull out, and these light tanks will probably light you to smithereens before you get out. So in this case, I'm going to go here. Let's see how that ends up. Alrighty, last example, I promise. So on this map, I'm in the Barask. That means I'm fast. I can get out of situations, so I can play a little bit more risky. But I also don't want to be getting myself into a situation where I'm going to have to trade with an opponent because I'm probably going to get myself wrecked. So instead, I'm going to be wanting to work on playing support, especially because I'm in a tier 10 game and on a wide open map. So I'm going to be having to worry about getting wrecked by a lot of tanks that are a lot bigger than me. So to do this, uh, first option, I can go over here. I can also go over this way if need be. I could try to s go to here and snipe across to this. I could try to passive scout in here, but they have an even 90, so that's a little bit risky. They also have a lot of TDs, so this area here is going to be very, very scary indeed. We have quite a few TDs as well, but here's the main face-off. The top tank on both teams, there's a 140 on their side and the Action 10 on our side. So the Action 10 has an advantage here. He also has a mild advantage here, but the 140 was recently buffed, and let's be honest, it's very overpowered at this point. So if the 140 goes to his side, I'm going to want to clear out because that 140 will absolutely demolish me. And so my plan is I'm going to go south to start off. I'm going to be playing in this area here. I'm going to try to support the Action 10 if he goes that way. If the Action 10 doesn't go that way, I'm probably just going to abandon that flank immediately because there's no way we're winning that flank without the Action 10. Um, if the action 10 does though that way and we try to take the spot, but if the action 10 dies, then I'm going to clear out. And because I'm fast enough, I can tr switch to this other side here. So this will be my backup plan. If we lose this side, then the only chance we have is to completely demolish this side. The way to do that in a Barask, I can't really go hold down. I can't do anything fancy like that. But what I can do is support the M103 who has the advantage on the heavy side. We have a serious advantage on the heavy side because we have more turreted armor. Look at this T30 versus their Conway and 704. We have that WZ, that guy's a tank, obviously. I mean, all of us are tank. Whatever. You get what I mean. We have the Death Star versus their Death Star. Jaeger is much better than E4. We should be fine on this side. The way to play this side is going to be bullying people on this ridge, so I can I can annoy them a bit while they're fighting this, and then I can cycle back this way. Um, if we do, in fact, win this side, and for some reason, we should win this top side even without me going over there. So if we win this bottom side, we win the game. If not, we're going to have to make sure that we win this top side, and then we can work on the rest of the map. So that's it. Those are all my tips for reading a team list. Honestly, if you made it through all the way to this part, uh, I'm pretty impressed. I was watching back the footage of the thought processes and step-by-steps of all those examples, and honestly, I was getting a little bit bored. So hopefully it's a little bit more exciting for you guys than it is for me listening to my own voice. But either way, yeah, that's the entire video. Thank you guys so much for the amount of support that you guys have been giving on the tips and tricks videos. I'm actually blown away by how popular they have gotten. And those are videos that I'm actually fairly proud of, so I'm glad that they did so well. Uh, obviously, I'm doing the tips and tricks videos because that's been what has been requested very often. A lot of people are asking for more advanced tips. So here you go, a slightly more advanced tip than the basic ones that I gave earlier. Uh, obviously, I can go even more advanced. I'm I'm working my way up there. Uh, the next video I don't really know about, so you guys are, of course, more than welcome to leave comments. I promise I will read them all. Uh, if any fun suggestions pop up, then I'll be sure to look into it. Uh, I'm still going to be uploading the uh, clan specials that we have every once in a while for DRK, because those are the ones that I enjoy making the most. But I'm I'm really glad that you guys are enjoying the tutorial videos as much as you are. That's about it. I... Uh, I hope everybody has a happy Thanksgiving. I'm hopefully going to be able to upload this prior to Thanksgiving, and I'll see you all in a month or so.